comment, like, subscribe. The bell keeps you notified. It helps the show thrive. Facial hair is one of those things that is forever coming in and out of fashion. At some points they're seen as a big no-no, being seen as messy and only belong to those who don't care for themselves. And the next moment, they're the height of fashion. In recent years, we've seen a shift from the full viking slash hipster beard being in fashion to little more than a Ned Flanders style mustache. Beard and mustache are the overarching terms for kinds of facial hair. Generally, beards cover the entire lower half of the face, and mustaches are just the hair that is grown above the upper lip. Though there can be crossover between the two, the word beard is of very old origins, coming ultimately from the Latin word for them, barba, which is of unknown origins. I can't help but wonder if this relates to the word barbarian. Barbarian comes from the Latin barbalus, meaning strange and foreign. This comes from the Proto-Indo-European barba, meaning unintelligible speech, because what barbarians spoke was unintelligible to the Romans. Barbarians are also often characterized for having long beards too, so perhaps there's a link there. Though that's just my own theory, so don't put too much stock in it. Mustache, however, comes from Dalek, a dialect of the Scots language in the northeast of Scotland, and their word of mustak, meaning upper lip. This was then adapted in medieval Greek and Old French into the word we use today. That Dalek word is thought to come from Proto Indo European too, and their word of menda, meaning to chew, which makes sense as mustaches relate to the lips and mouth, which do all our chewing. This is also where we get the word of mandible from too, the name for the lower jaw and a kind of mouth insects have. Anyway, it can be hard to keep track of what's hot and not in the world of beards and tashes. Some people have for always rocking facial hair. For example, many religions place importance on facial hair, such as the Kesh practice in Sikhism, where hair is grown naturally out of respect to God. But suffice to say, with all these different kinds of facial hairstyles, we need a way to talk easily about them and what kind of hair people are growing on their face. Thankfully, to make these conversations easier, different kinds of facial hair have have acquired unique names for themselves. From looking into the names of different facial hairstyles, I noticed a theme in their nomenclature, and that's the fact that facial hairstyle names on the whole derive from one of two places. The styles are either named after their most famous bearer, or what they are reminiscent of. This isn't the case for every kind of facial hair, but on the whole, this is where their names come from. In regards to that first category, the facial hairs named after people, we have the Van Dyke. The Van Dyke beard consists of a mustache, which is sometimes curled up or pointed out, along with hair growing from out the chin, with the rest of the face shaved clean. This is actually the facial hair I had when I first started Name Explain. Now I have more of a full beard, but I haven't changed my character's design. Yeah, 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 it's not a mouth despite what some people think. This facial hair is named after Anthony Van Dyke, a Flemish painter from the 17th century. Not only did he have this style of facial hair himself, but his most famous subject, King Charles I, also had it. This meant that this facial hair featured heavily in his works, so it got named in his honour. Another facial hairstyle that has roots in the past is the Garibaldi. This might seem like a conventional beard at first, but it has a few defining features, such as being rounded at the bottom and shorter on the sides. This beard is named after the 19th century general Giuseppe Garibaldi. He famously donned this beard while helping create and unify the Kingdom of Italy. And if you are wondering, the biscuit is also named after him, but how that came to be I do not know, and that's a story for another time. We're talking about beards, not biscuits today I'm afraid. And Speaking of beards, one of the longest, most rugged style of beards is called the Ned Kelly. This is when a beard is grown out and not very well kept. The Ned Kelly beard is named after the Australian Ned Kelly, a bush ranger and outlaw of the 19th century. He famously wore a suit of bulletproof armour in his final shootout with the law, and seems to become something of an Australian folk hero, though perhaps his biggest legacy is the long beard named in his honour. The Fu Manchu moustache style features a very long moustache that hangs below the mouth and chin. While not named after a real person, is instead named after the fictional character of Fu Manchu. This character was the villain in a series of British novels in the early 20th century. This moustache has however become something of a stereotypical trope of the Chinese, being used to portray people from China and East Asia as a whole in a negative discriminatory way. While it can be rocked by anyone, it does have that certain connotation to it that probably needs to be bared in mind. We however have some tashes named after people from more recent history too. The Dar Ali is a type of moustache somewhat similar to the Fu Manchu, but has instead waxed the face upwards. This derives from, of course, the artist Salvador Dali, who had a moustache just as surreal as his works of art. Then we have the Zapper, which is 
a thick mustache along with a patch below the lip, named of course after musician Frank Zappa. When going into this video, I honestly thought that sideburns would be named after what they look like, as if the sides of the head had been somewhat burned, creating that effect. I know that's kind of gross, but the logic is there, right? So I was amazed to read that sideburns are in fact named after a real person. Sideburns are named after, and I'm not making this up, one Ambrose Burnside, a Union general in the Civil War. What he had were much more extravagant to sideburns that we know of today. And while he didn't invent the look, he was famous enough to have the look named after him. They were initially dubbed Burnsides, but somewhere over time, this name got flipped around to be Sideburns. It sounds silly, but sometimes language and etymology can be very, very silly. But in regards to facial hairstyles that are actually named after what they look like, we have, first off, the handlebar mustache. This mustache is big and curled at the end, kind of like the ones used in the aforementioned Van Dyke. This name comes from the fact that this mustache looks like the handlebars of a bike. I guess more specifically an old-fashioned bike that had the more curved ends to them. However, I have to stress, don't ride a person with a handlebar mustache like a bike unless they've specifically asked you to. I tried it once and it didn't go down well. Another mustache named after a curved piece of metal is the horseshoe mustache. These are somewhat like the Fu Manchu, but actually aren't as long, and instead of dangling from the face, the extension is part of the facial hair itself. The upside down U shape is reminiscent of a horseshoe, hence the name. The toothbrush mustache is one of the smallest bits of facial hair out there. It is just a little square or rectangle of hair grown under the nose. Its most famous bearer is Charlie Chaplin. In fact, he was so well known for it that no one else ever grew one ever again. Yep, that's, that's the story we're going with to keep this video advertiser friendly. Trust me, when your most successful video has barely made any money because it was about the other guy with this tash, you tend to err on the side of caution. While it doesn't look like an entire toothbrush, it looks very much like the main actual brush part. The chin strap beard is a very short beard that has started to grow just around the lower part of the face with no attaching mustache. This looks very much like the chin strap of a helmet, which explains its name. There are different varieties of chin strap beards depending on the length. One that is slightly longer and perhaps a bit less tamed has in recent years become known as the neck beard. This is because it is a beard that resides solely on the neck. The term neck beard has gone on to refer to more than just this facial hair and can relate more to the person who has one. But once again, that's a topic for another time. A subset of facial hair named after what they look like relate to animals they are reminiscent of, such as the walrus mustache. This is a really thick stash that droops over the mouth under its own weight. This name it comes from the fact that they look like the long whiskers of a walrus. Tusks are optional, I suppose. The goat patch, and its much more popular shortened form of the goatee, is hair grown just on the chin. They make up the latter half of the Van Dyke along with the handlebar mustache traditionally. Many breeds of goat have facial hair like this, so the beard is named after them. This is more obvious with the goat patch. Goatee is simply a diminutive form, which makes sense as goatees are shorter than goat patches, hence the shorter name. Mutton chops are much more pronounced size burns, sometimes attaching to form a mustache and beard too. It was mutton shops that the aforementioned Ambrose Burnside had. This term is so linked with this facial hair that it can be easy to forget that mutton chops are originally the name for the chop of meat from a sheep known as mutton when eaten. The facial hair of mutton chops do in fact look very similar to the cut of meat, so were named in their honour. So, this one is named after an animal, just their meat specifically. A ducktail beard may look like a usual standard beard. Its defining feature is the fact that it comes to a pointed end. This makes it look very similar to the tail features of a duck. If you imagine someone with a duck lying on their face, you can kind of see why this one is called a ducktail. Woohoo! Sorry, I, I couldn't resist. While most facial hairstyles are named after either a person or what they look like, that isn't the case for all of them. For example, we have the pencil mustache. This is just a thin sliver of hair above the upper lip. While some think this name derives from the fact that it is thin like a pencil, it seems the more popular belief is that it has this name because it looks like it was drawn on with a pencil. The sole patch is just a small amount of hair that has grown directly under the bottom lip. This name seems to come from the fact that people who made it popular were fans of jazz and soul music. So this is a facial hairstyle named after a musical genre. One beard that links to religion and culture is the Shenandoah, more commonly known as the Amish beard, or the Lincoln beard. This is like a chin strap but much longer. This is grown out in Amish communities as a sign of commitment and lacks the tash due to mustaches at the time being heavily linked with the military. The name seems to come from the Shenandoah area of Virginia, which has a noticeable Amish population. 
Finally, I want to talk about the name for facial hair we use when there isn't too much facial hair. That being stubble. Stubble is when hair is just starting to grow on the face, or conversely, the majority of it has been shaved off. While it tends to happen unintentionally, many people choose to just have stubble. This is a word that feels almost onomatopoeic in what it means, but it comes from the old French istubel before becoming stubble in English. Initially, this word was the name for the stumps of grain left in a field after it had been harvested. This reflects what stubble on the face looks like, so I guess this one is too another facial hair named after what it looks like, as is the alternative name for stubble, the five o'clock shadow. The shadow part of this name reflects the fact that stubble makes someone's face look darker, like a shadow. But why five o'clock? Well, this phrase was coined in the 1930s by the Gem Micromatic Razors and Blades Company and was part of their campaign to actually remove the five o'clock shadow off of a person's face. The reason it was five o'clock was because it was this time that the working day came to an end, and by then, it was thought that hair was already starting to grow back since having been shaved off in the morning. While it was once seen as a bad thing, the five o'clock shadow has since become another fashion statement unto itself. This, however, is just a small selection of facial hairstyle names, but let me know what ones I missed out on down below and which styles you like most. Perhaps it's time for me to ditch my little facial hair. Or then again, maybe not. This video topic was suggested by Nancy Moon Smith over on my Patreon. Every Wednesday, I put up a video request post over on my Patreon for my awesome patrons to leave video ideas on. I then pick one of those ideas to be turned into a video the following Wednesday. So if you have a great idea for a name explain video and wish to enjoy name explain videos ad free as well as get exclusive content, then why not support the channel on Patreon? It takes just one dollar a month to help the channel in a huge way and gets you all of these amazing benefits. Visit Patreon patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below. Name Explain depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, and the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explain videos. $2 a month gets you all that, plus your name here with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.